And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. God is good, all the time. and all the time. God. Let's try that again, as though you mean it. God is good, all the time. and all the time. God is good. good morning, everyone. How are you? Blessed. I'm delighted to hear that. I'm also blessed. If you are alive, you are blessed. Amen. If you can... If you made your way to this church, you're blessed. Amen. If you're able to hear what I'm saying, you're blessed. Amen. If you can see me, you're blessed. You have some place to live, you're blessed. And so when my brother said, I am blessed, I believe he spoke for all of us. We are blessed and we ought never to forget the goodness of God to us. Somebody say amen. amen. I thank God for the honor of being here with you. It is a privilege to speak for God. And he has asked me through his servant, Pastor Burkett, to address you for this coming week. And my commitment to God is to deliver, thus saith the Lord. Amen. As simply as I possibly can. And I will allow the Spirit of God to determine how you respond to thus saith the Lord. I can only deliver the words. I cannot tell you how to respond. But I believe you will respond as the Spirit of God moves upon your heart. And so I thank God very much. It is now, this night's just short of a little past 11. I will not hold you long, but just long enough. Is that okay? So that I can do the work of God. How many of you present now, you are visitors, you are not Seventh-day Adventists, raise your hand. You are not, ah, God bless you. Thank you very much for coming, and may the Lord grant you all the desires of your heart. Anybody else? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. You are visiting. Raise your hand. Don't be afraid. We're very nice people in this church. Raise your hand. Let's see your hand. Anybody else? Sister, what's your name? Mary. Mary. Oh, my. That's a good name. You are the mother of Jesus. Mary. It's nice to have you. Please come again, Mary. We'll be here all week. I will look for you. Again, Mary, where are you from? Summersville. Summersville. How far away is that from uh, Chestertown? Um, 
Okay, so not too far. All right. I am from Ann Arbor, Michigan, but originally from Barbados in the West Indies, a little island this wide and that long, and but a lovely little place. So there's no other visitor among us. All right. Are we online, Pastor? Are we being streamed? Yes. Let me welcome those of you who are connecting via Facebook or YouTube or Zoom or whatever it is. We thank God for technology that allows someone to stand in Chestertown and be heard in Kenya or Arabia or wherever else. We thank God for technology. Amen. The good side. There's also a dark side to technology, but I won't get into that. All right. Our subject for this morning, from Genesis to Revelation. What did I say? Genesis. From Genesis to Revelation. Now, before I begin, can you do three little things for me? Let me check my phone, make sure it's off. If you're not using this to read the Bible, make sure it's turned off so that we don't disturb God. You know, God is holy. Come on, somebody say amen for God. Amen. God is holy and God loves reverence. He really does. And so please preserve reverence as we worship the God of heaven and earth. Pretend you are in a courtroom. Would you get on your phone in a courtroom? No. You'd make sure it's, you would, perhaps they would not even allow you to bring one of these. And when I go to the uh, city hall in my town, you've got to check your phone. You can't take it in. You've got to check it. You cannot take it in. And so if we can pay that kind of respect to sinful human beings, surely we can show God some respect. Can I say, can you say amen? All right. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me. All I want you to say is, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I want to speak God's words. How did Christ raise Lazarus? By his words. He spoke. Mm -hmm. His words then can cancel death. Amen. How did God create heaven and earth? By his, word. his word. His word then can create. How did God cast out devils? By his, word. By his word. His word can get the devil out of you. Can you say amen? amen. Or out of your children. Mm -hmm. amen. Yes. How does God forgive? Thy sins are forgiven thee by his word. How did God heal? By his word. And so I want to speak what? The words of God. Because my words cannot raise the dead. Or heal the sick. And so from time to time, simply say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. The third favor I ask, think. As you listen, concentrate. Thinking is not an automatic activity. It must be deliberate and conscious. Think. I've often said, and I'm sure I'll say it a lot more times, if we would think, we would not eat some of the things we eat. If we would stop and think, we would not drink some of the things we drink. If we would stop and think, we would not date the people we date. Are you following me? Let us, if we would think, we would not attend some of the churches we attend. If we would stop and think, what am I doing? Think. Isaiah 118, come now, let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. Let's bow our heads. As I pray, dear God, I need your help. I am made of dirt, and I cannot handle spiritual things unless I have power from above. I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, dear God, help me to deliver your words of life, so that first you are glorified, and second your people are blessed. If I have sinned against you, forgive me. Your Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. Now, Father, use me, I pray. Bless those who are listening, whether in person or online, wherever they are, bless them, dear God. Give me simple language that the truth may reach every listening heart of every age. Bless this church. Bless the sister church. Bless your manservant you've chosen to lead your people. Grant him always wisdom from above and all the officers who serve with him. Bless your people wherever they are on this earth day, God, wherever your people are worshiping you now, bless them and put your words in the mouths of the speakers. Here it is, humble prayer, Father, 
I offer it from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say, Amen, amen and amen. amen. Our subject is what? From Genesis to Revelation. Go with me to the Gospel of John. Chapter 1, we'll read from verse 1. John is different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Matthew, Mark, and Luke together are called the Synoptic Gospels. Why? Because they tend to see things alike. The word synoptic means generally to see alike. Optic have eyes, optician, sin together, similar, seeing things together, Matthew, Mark, but John sees things very, very differently. So John is not a synoptic gospel. His view of Christ is just different. Let's see how he begins as he introduces Christ. John 1, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Stop. Whenever the beginning was, and we're human beings, we cannot fully understand eternity. We cannot fully understand what everlasting means. I've heard many Christians say, what will I do in heaven? I'll be born stiff, living there forever and ever with no football and no basketball. But we have a different mind, so we will not be born stiff. You cannot be born stiff living in the presence of someone who can raise the dead, send bread from heaven, bring water from a rock. You cannot be born stiff in his presence any more than you're born in the presence of a magician. In the beginning was the word. What is this word? Read verse 14 for me of John chapter 1 as we continue with the subject from Genesis to Revelation. What does verse 14 say? And the word, come on, became flesh and dwelt among us. Who was that? Jesus. Now, take that information from verse 14 and put it into verse 1. Read verse 1 with me now. In the beginning was? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ was? Yes. So when you read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, you probably read, in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus himself, come on, was God. Amen. And still is. I pause for you to swallow that. Jesus Christ has always been there. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Who is the same? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, read verse 3. All things were made, come on, tell me, by Him, if you have a King James Version, and without Him. Finish the verse. Was not anything made that was made. With You remove Christ, nothing exists. I appreciate that, amen, but did you understand what I said? Remove Christ, and nothing can exist. All things were made by Him. Who is Him? Jesus. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Read verse 4. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. What have we learned? Jesus has always been there with the Father and he is equal with the Father. It is he who created heaven and earth and nothing exists without Christ. And he is life. This is John introducing Jesus. He is describing that man who walked the streets of Galilee. That was the mighty God from way back. Now let's look at another book written by the same author. Let us go to 1 John chapter 1. We'll read from verse 1 our subject from Genesis to Revelation. 1 John chapter 1, reading from verse 1. It's almost 11.15. I'll let you out in good time. Please don't panic. You have 1 John 1. Well, when the preacher asks you a question, you must answer him. Do you have 1 John 1? Yes. All right. From verse 1. Are you there? Let me pray again. Father, as I continue speaking to your beautiful people, 
tell me exactly what to tell them that you may be glorified in their lives in Jesus name I pray amen first John 1 verse 1 that which was from what the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled come on of the word of life for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us stop this is no different from what we read in john 1 verses 1 to 3 or 4 listen carefully that which was from the beginning now John is a human being that's the best he can do but he was the same one who said in John 1 1 in the beginning was the word that's the same man writing but he's more personal in 1st John 1 he says that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life what is John saying the mighty God who always existed we saw him we heard him we held him who is the president of the United States you don't know <laughs> who is our president have you ever held his hand have you ever spoken face to face with him who is the queen of England have you ever held her hand she's in a palace she's in a white house who is the god of the universe mm -hmm. were there people who held his hand yes now John said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. What is this called? It's the ear, but what's, we use the ear to do what? And what is that? We have five of them, what is that? A sense. Am I too far from you? Are you hearing me? Is this mic working? All right. What is this? Okay, what is that called? The sense of hearing. John said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard. This is no guesswork. This is not gossip. We heard him, which we have seen with our eyes. Is this a sense? Yes. Is this a sense? Yes. Which we have handled is touch a sense. Yes or no? We use our senses. God knows we're limited. It is God who gives us hearing seeing smelling tasting touch four of them four of them of the five are located on the head god presented himself in a way that limited human beings can understand and can testify we heard him we saw him we touched him where we smelled him because all people perspire who is that the god from way back Give me a name. Jesus. I get all the right answers from this side. What's wrong with that side? Are you sleeping with your eyes open? Who is this God? This side be quiet. Who is this God? Jesus. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus the Son of God now. John said, I heard him. I saw him. I touched him. He calls him that eternal life. John is emphasizing what he said in the Gospel of John. Jesus is the mighty God who has always existed. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 1. We thank John for what he wrote, but there's someone more powerful than John. That's God the Father. Let's listen to what God the Father says about God the Son. Hebrews 1, we read 10 to 12. Now I want you to read microscopically. Concentrate as you read. And the Spirit of God will teach you. You have Hebrews 1. Nobody answered the preacher. I see this is a cultural thing. I'll have to live with it. Okay. Okay. All right. God bless you. You have Hebrews 1. 
Let's read from verse 8. Remember now, this is God the Father speaking. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, read with me now, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now, this is God the Father speaking. He is speaking to the Son. Tell me what he calls the Son. Oh God. He calls him God. What else does he say about the Son in verse 8? What is forever and ever? Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. What is the throne suggesting to us? Rulership. Rulership. Mm. Then what is the Father saying about the Son? He has always ruled, of course, with Him. The Father is testifying, the Son has always ruled. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now let's skip to verse 10 of chapter 1 of Hebrews. Read with me. And thou, Lord, in the beginning, come on, hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. Now, what is God the Father saying about Jesus? You're the creator. He didn't say, we have laid the foundation. He said, you. Look at verse 11. Read nice and loud if you have a king again. They shall perish, but thou remain. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. When something perishes, what happens? It comes to an end. The father says, they shall perish. Who is they? Yes, the heavens and the earth. We just read in verse 10. When you read, concentrate, we read in verse 10. Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. We have earth and heaven. Now the Father says in verse 11, they shall perish. Who is they? Heaven and earth. Finish verse 11. But thou shalt remain. Now what does that mean? He'll never pass away. The Father is saying, the Son will never pass away. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. And thy years, finish verse 12, shall not fail. The Father is saying, you have always been there. You will always be there. Now, you may argue with John. You cannot argue with God, the Father. Let me pause. What have you learned so far about Jesus? Tell me, this side, somebody. Say, sister, say. He has always been there, that side. What have you learned from what we've read? Somebody tell me quickly. He is God. As much as the Father is God, say yes quickly. Yes. What else have you learned? Anybody? He is the creator. Of what? heaven and earth what exists without his creation nothing. nothing that's Jesus what's our subject from Genesis to Revelation now we have located Jesus way back are you following me we have located Jesus way back then we located him at creation are you following me at creation let's go to Psalm 90 what's our subject okay you pause before you answer me. I want you to be quicker than that. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 90. We'll read from verse 1. It's 25 minutes after 11. Don't panic. I know there's a potluck. I know Adventists love potlucks, but it's okay. This is a better potluck. Can you say amen? amen. This right here. Mm -hmm. This potluck will take you to heaven. Amen. That one. Okay. Uh, Psalm 90. Let's read from verse 1. Do you have that? Let me ask you, which one of you so far has prayed for me and said, Lord, put your word, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. God bless you, God bless you. The rest of you who have not done it yet, I'll do it before I finish. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place, come on, from in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth of the world, even from, come on, everlasting, read with me too, everlasting, finish the verse, thou art God. Now, who is that? Jesus. Mm. Who formed the mountains? 
Jesus. That's what the Father said in Hebrews 1. Now, that Psalm 90 was written out by David, but by Moses. Moses is acknowledging Christ as the one who formed the mountains, and he said, long before you created, you have been there from everlasting, come on, to everlasting. Let me ask you this, how long is everlasting? Mm -hmm. But Moses doubles it. Are you with me? No, you're not with me. You're nice looking, but you're not with me. Are you with me? Moses said, you have been there from everlasting. This is the best Moses can do to express the truth that the Creator Christ has always been. We've located Jesus before creation. Always existed with the Father. We have located Him at creation. Let us go to Exodus 3. We read from verse 7 of Exodus 3. And God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard the, seen the oppression by reason of their cry, for I am going with milk and honey unto good land and the large, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God says, I am coming to deliver them. The question is, who is that person? Let's go to verse 13. Now God tells Moses, go talk to Pharaoh. Listen to Moses. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Moses said, God, give me a name, because they have forgotten you. God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say, who is commanding Pharaoh to release the Israelites, what name was given to Moses? I am. Go to the Gospel of John. Gospel of John. Let's go to chapter 5. Or 6. Let's go to 6. Let's read verse 48. What does that say? I am the bread of life. Go to 51. What does that say? I am the living bread which came down from heaven. All right. Let's go to John 8. Let's read verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them and said what? I am, I am the light of the world. Go to John 10. Read verse 7. I am the door. I am the door. Of course, he is also the good shepherd later on in that chapter. Jesus is the bread. He is the light. He is the door. He is the shepherd. Go to John 14. Well, no, not before we get to, well, yes, go to John 14, then we'll come back to 11. John 14, read verse 6. Jesus said unto him, what? I am the, the, and the, now here's how you can say it. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. So we see all these I ams, I ams, I ams. Go to John 15. Mm -hmm. Read verse 1. Come on, verse 1. I am the true vine. Now, the biggest one of all. Let's go back to chapter 11 of John. We read from verse 23. You have John 11, yeah. verse 23. Yeah. Read with me. Jesus saith unto her, what? Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection when? At the last day. Jesus said unto her, verse 25, what? I am the resurrection and the life. Stop. I am the resurrection and the life. Now, go to John 8. John 8, 
Our subject from Genesis to Revelation. Let's read from verse 56. Your father Abraham, come on, rejoiced, rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, come on, and was glad. And was glad. Verse 57. Come on, read for me. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Read 58. Now carefully, slowly, microscopically. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, come on, clearly, before Abraham was, come on, I am. Now, what was the name God gave Moses? I am. What does Jesus say of himself? Before Abraham was born, I am. Who is the I am that spoke to Moses in the Exodus? Jesus. We have seen Jesus way back before creation. We've seen Jesus at creation. It was he who said, let there be light. We've seen Jesus at the Exodus. Name some prophets in the Old Testament. Quickly, quickly. Prophets. Come on. Isaiah, Isaiah another one. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, another one. Amos, another one. Joel, another one. Elijah, another one. Elisha, another one. Samuel, another one. Jonah, another one. Micah, another one. Nahum, another one. All right, stop showing off. Okay, all right. We thank God for these prophets. God bless you, God bless you. Now, let's learn something about these men as they wrote their books. Go to First Peter chapter 1. First Peter 1. Do you have that? Yeah. You ought to be quick. This is a Seventh-day Adventist church. We used to be called the people of the... But we're not called that anymore, and that's not nice. We should get back to being the people of the book. Do you have First Peter chapter 1? Now, Peter is telling us that the prophets of old, when they were writing, they wanted to understand what they were writing. But they did not realize they were writing for somebody else, not for themselves. But they really wanted to understand. They wanted to know when this God would come and walk on the earth. They wanted to be alive when that happened. Let's read from verse 9 of First Peter 1. What does that say? Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched out diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Verse 11 now, read slowly. Searching what? Come on. Or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should be revealed. Now, when Isaiah was writing, who inspired him? Look at verse 11. And I will not tell you the answer. Find it for yourselves. The Spirit of Christ. Who inspired Ezekiel? The Spirit of Christ. Now, we have located Christ. Before creation. Are you with me? I didn't hear you. Yeah. All right. We have located Christ at creation. We have located Christ at the Exodus. Now we see Christ working through all the prophets. Name the first prophet. Moses. Close. Enoch. Enoch. It's good when you can correct yourself. Yes. Enoch was the first prophet. Do you realize Enoch and Adam lived together for 300 years? You didn't hear what I said. When Enoch was prophesying, Adam was still alive. What spirit was working through Enoch? The spirit of Christ. Who was the last prophet of the Old Testament? Who, works, who, who, who worked through Malachi? The spirit of Christ. What's our subject? Genesis. From Genesis to Revelation, what do we have? Jesus. Before Genesis, what do we have? Jesus. Now let's go to the Gospels. Let's go to Matthew 1. It's 25 to 12. 
Who has to go to work immediately after the service? Okay. So if I take an extra five minutes, you won't be angry with me? Okay. What book did I say? What chapter? Let's read from verse 21. What's our subject? Okay. <laughs> Let me pray again. Father, as I continue this message, remind me I'm here for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The angel is talking to Joseph in a dream. Here's what he tells him, verse 21. If you have the King James Version, read with me. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Come on. For he shall save his people from their sins. By the way, that's why Christ came. One of the reasons. To save us, not in our sins. He came to save us from our sin. So if he takes us from sin, he must take us to something else. I didn't say that clearly. Let me try again. If you're drowning and you're saved, you're saved from the drowning. Oh, where's the drowning taking place? In the water. Where are you taken to? Some dry land somewhere, some ship, some boat. Mm -hmm. You're taken out of the water to a place where there is no water. Amen. If you're saved from your sins, Christ takes you to a place where there is what? No sin. Because you can be drowning in one sin. Ah, you missed that. You don't need 10 sins to go to hell. One. How many did Adam commit before God put him out of the garden? One. So Christ saves us from sin to a life of victory over sin. All right. She shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, go to Isaiah 45. Christ is a savior. Isaiah 45. Let's read verse 22. You have Isaiah? Yes. Big book, 66 chapters. Second largest book in the, old, in the entire Bible. Which is the largest? Psalms, Psalms yes. Well, largest chapter, yes, 119. Yes. <laughs> Longest book, 150 Psalms. All right. Do we have Isaiah 45? Yes. Verse 22. Yes. Read carefully. Read with me now. Look unto me. Come on. And be saved all the ends of the earth. Why? I am God and there is none else. Let me give you a few seconds to look at that verse. What does God say he can do in that verse? Save. Now, what else does he say about himself? There is no other. So what is he saying? Come to me and be saved. Because? Because? Listen to me carefully. I can't let you go. You must give me the right answer. Listen to the verse again. He is the only who said that. I like you. He is the only one who can save. And so he said, look unto me all the ends of the earth. Now what does he mean? Is he talking to black people, yes or no? Yes. White people, yes or no? Yes. Poor people, yes or no? Yes. Indians, yes or no? Russians, come on. Yes. Japanese, Koreans, huh? Yes. Yes. All the ends look to me. I'll save you because there's no one else that can save you. Who is that? Go back to Matthew 121. You have Matthew 121? Not yet. Give me five more seconds. This is an Adventist church. Do you have it now? Read with me my version. And she shall bring forth a son. Come on. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? He shall save his people from their sins. This is the person who spoke in Isaiah 45, 22. Who was that? Jesus Christ who spoke to Isaiah. Now, verse 21 says, she shall bring forth a son. What does bring forth mean? Give birth. Can you give birth to spirit? Don't pause. Can you give birth to spirit? Always speak with confidence even when you're wrong. Are you following? Now, can you give birth to spirit? Yes or no? No! Can you give birth to human being? Yes! What does that tell you about that God in verse 21? He was human. But, what else do we know about him in verse 21? He will save. But he was the same one who said in Isaiah 45, 22, there's no one else 
but me who can save. So he is God. But look at verse 23. It really settles the matter for us. Behold, a virgin shall be with, and shall bring forth her, and they shall call his name, which being interpreted is God with us. How did God come to us in verse 21? He was born. Don't ask me to explain that. It's the greatest mystery of the Bible. That the mighty God, whom the angels worship, was always existed, humbled himself and came as a baby. I cannot explain how God existed as an embryo. And was born. And his mother breastfed God. Mary changed the diapers of God. Put a name to that God. Jesus. Why? For you. Don't look at the person next to you, even if it's your spouse. All of this was done for you. What's our subject? Genesis and Revelation. Where did we first meet Jesus? In the beginning. Way back. Eternity. Always been there. Then where did we see him? Creation. Then where did we see him? Exodus. Where else have we seen him? From Enoch? Come on. To Malachi. Mm. Now where is he in the Gospels? We have this Jesus. Now let's go to Revelation 22. Let's go to Revelation 1. Revelation 1. We read 17 and 18 of Revelation 1. Well, let's read from verse 10 of Revelation 1. Are you there? If you have my version, read with me. I was in the Spirit when? On the Lord's Day. Name the Lord's Day quickly. The seventh day Sabbath. And heard what behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, What? I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Now, here's his voice. Let's skip the rest of 11, go to 12. What does that say? And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw what? Seven golden kings. Where is John looking? Yes, but that's general, be specific. Where is he looking? The holy place. That's where the seven candlesticks were. Seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, come on, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed in the garment, down to the foot, and girded by the patch of the golden girdle. Now, who is he looking at? Jesus. But let's confirm that. Read from verse 17. And when I saw him, what happened? I fell at my feet, and his feet is dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, what? Fear not, I am first and the last, and he that and was dead. Mm. This is Jesus. He came to John. All books of the Bible culminate in Revelation. Here's Jesus, who started everything in Genesis. He's bringing everything to an end in Revelation. Now go to Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible. It's the quarter of the twelve. Let's read verse 20 of Revelation 22. What does that say? He which testifies these things saith what? Surely I come quickly. Who is speaking? Jesus. Let me pause. What do you think I'm trying to get you to understand by this message? Anybody, tell me. Christ is the one from way back. Our finite minds have to use the word beginning. We cannot understand someone who has simply always been there. We cannot understand that. We accept it by faith. And so we use the word beginning because our minds are limited. Jesus Christ, with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Some, what have you, what do you think I'm trying to get you to understand? Someone else. All the scriptures. Now we've talked about Enoch being the first prophet. But what's our subject? Genesis. Who wrote Genesis? Moses. Was Moses a prophet? Yes. 
So where was the spirit of Christ working from Genesis come on, to Revelation? What else do you think I want you to understand? It's all about Jesus. It is, uh, who said that? I like that man. Nice tie. It is all about Jesus. But we learned he was born. What does that tell you about Jesus? Come on. I'm a human being. He was born. What does that mean? He's like me. Let me ask you a question. Was Jesus 12? Come on, speak with confidence. Was he 13? Was he 14? Was he 5? Was he 20? He's an example for every age of human development. And at every stage, he was both human, come on, and God. Now, I cannot understand what it means to give birth to a child. I have no clue. And I want no clue. Are you following me? <laughs> My mother could explain that when she was alive. Every mother listening to me can explain that. I can't. Because mothers have the similar experience. They understand. You have a baby in a cradle. You have men and women pass by the baby. The women react differently. They start goo gang and goo gooing and goo gang over the baby. The man may wait. The woman will act differently because she understands. Jesus became one of us. Human. Who became human? The one who said, let there be light. Who became human? The one who parted the Red Sea. Who became human? The one who made heaven and earth. Who became human? The one who brought manna from the clouds. This is Jesus. Now listen to what the Bible says about Christ. Go to 1 Corinthians 1. Let's read verse 30. This verse is one of many that talk about Jesus and all that he means to us. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. Now you have to read this verse very, very carefully. It is awkwardly worded. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30. When you have that, say amen. amen. All right. Some of you are still looking. You have it now? If you have my version, read with me. But of him are ye... In Christ Jesus, who of God are made unto us now wisdom and redemption and sanctification and mm -hmm. Christ is unto us wisdom, redemption, sanctification, righteousness. He is all these things to us. You need wisdom? Where do you go? And how do you go to him? The word. The word, yes. This. You want to do well in your studies at school? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Where should you start? With the person who originated every branch of knowledge except crime. Are you following me? Jesus. He is made unto us <clears throat> wisdom, redemption. Righteousness, sanctification, redemption. He's made unto us all these things. No wonder Jeremiah says of him in Jeremiah 23 says, And his name shall be called, and this is the name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our right. He is our righteousness. Your power over sin is Jesus. Your wisdom to make the right decisions is Jesus. Your humility is Jesus. There is a man called Jesus, who is also, tell me, God. God. Here's what he can do. Here's, here you are. Here's God the Father. Here's Jesus. No man can come to the Father but by me. Jesus as a human being takes your hand. Hmm? Jesus as God takes the Father's hand. And in him, he connects the two of you. Answer this question for me. If God is in you, do you have power to conquer any sin? Yes or no? Yes. If God is in me, do I have the power to conquer my short temper? Yes. 
If God is in me, do I have the courage to stop working on Sabbath? Yes. Is there God who understands what I'm struggling with? Yes. Is there God who can do something about it? Yes. Is there power to break me free of pornography? Yes. Name that power. Jesus. Is there power to help me stop beating my husband? Yes. What's that power? Come on. Jesus. Is there power that can help me to obey my parents? Yes. Who is that power? Jesus. And is there a power that can strengthen us and take us through COVID restrictions and Omicron restrictions and whatever else is coming? What's the answer? Yes. Who is that power? Jesus. And so the Bible says, for God so loved the world. The world. But let's forget the world for a minute. For God so loved me. Mm -hmm. That's not selfishness. That's biblically correct. That he gave his only begotten son. If you had one shirt and somebody knocked on your door and says, uh, Pastor Burkett, I don't have any clothes. Can I have a shirt? Would you give it to him? My answer would be no. I only have one. If I had two, okay. But I only have one. Are you following? God had and still has one only begotten son. Listen to what the Bible said. For God so loved the world that he loaned his only begotten son. Correct me quickly. He gave. So what is Christ? A gift. Do you take gifts back? Mm -hmm. Do you realize Christ has been given to us forever? That's why he still has human form. Mm -hmm. He took human form back to heaven with him. Glorified, of course, which is what we will have when we write. Jesus Christ, right now, is human. While he's also God. Now, where is he sitting? On the right hand of the Father. That's the position of power. Now, it doesn't mean he's actually physically sitting. No. It simply means he has occupied a position of power from which he represents us. If you had a housing problem and your brother was in charge of the Department of Health, uh, Housing or whatever else, would you be at ease? Yes. My brother will work it out. Are you following me? Come on, are you with me? My brother is the secretary for housing. So I really have no problem. I just call him. I don't have to go through any secretary. He comes to my house. There is a God. Who's your brother? His name is Christ. Amen. He has all the power in the universe. When he rose from the grave and he gave his final words to the disciples, we call it the Great Gospel Commission. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. It means everywhere. God can give us power so that city council does not mess with us. God can defend his church so that the government cannot mess with the church. There's someone who looks just like you in the Godhead. His name, come on, is Jesus. And there's someone in the Godhead who looks like the Father. His name is Jesus. He can represent the Father. He can represent us. But always remember, it was the Father who sent him. The Father is not our adversary. It was the Father who sent Christ. So we have Father and Son united for our best interests. Amen. And so before I close, I make an appeal to you. Recommit your life. Finish my words. To Jesus. If you're asking how, you just say. You say, Father, thank you for this word. I see Christ a little more clearly. I recommit my life to him. Let him come into me. Dwell in me. I direct my life. Don't try to explain how it happens. Just believe that it happens. You simply say in your heart, all of it, Father, 
I recommit my life to you. Send your spirit, the spirit of Christ, to come into me and to direct me. How many of you will say, Father, I recommit my life to you. Can I see your hand? God bless you. I believe you. Stand up with me. Head bowed, eyes closed. As a gift through faith in him. Forgive us, dear God, for many years of doubt and disbelief and unbelief, not realizing that faith is the avenue whereby we access this power. We recommit our lives to you, Father, and we ask you to fill us with the Spirit of Christ, that the life of Christ may be lived through us as it did in the life of Paul. As Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, Father of heaven and earth. We want Christ to live in us through the Spirit. Give us, give him to us, dear God, by giving us his spirit. Bless everyone who listened in person and online. Let us daily, dear God, daily renew this relationship with our Savior. Fill us with a love for righteousness and a hatred for sin. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We love him and we love you. You may be seated. Just before I close, let me ask you a few questions. What will you take from this message? Anybody tell me, what will you take with you? You will meditate on something you heard. Jesus, Jesus somebody else. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Not Christ next to me, Christ in me. When Christ was on the earth, the disciples were with him. Were, he was not in them. Are you following me? Through the Spirit, Christ is in us. So Jesus said, He shall dwell with you and shall be in you. You didn't hear what I said. Through the Spirit, Christ is closer to us than He was to the disciples. What else will you take from the message? He will save you from my sins. He will save you from how many sins? All. All. Who else can save you from sin? No. Nobody else. What else will you take? He gives you victory. You don't win the victory, you receive it by faith. Are you following me? You receive it. You know, you can't make yourself drunk. Alcohol makes you drunk. What do you have to do? You have to receive it, then when it is in you, it does its work. Are you following me? We receive the Spirit of Christ. When we do that, it does its work. Anybody else? What will you take from the message? Come on. Say it again. He was from everlasting to everlasting and will continue to be from everlasting to everlasting. Somebody else. I can overcome now. You can, we are to overcome now. Now. One more. Jesus is the central figure of the entire Bible. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, finish the verse, and they are they which testify of me. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen.